Hi guys and welcome to Heidi K Makeup. We are going to curl my hair today with a curling wand. Um, I have been filming a lot of like kind of get ready's with me and trying to like play with my hair a little bit and so that's what this video is going to be. If you happen to click on this video and you have not yet hit the subscribe button, consider doing so. Or better yet, hit the bell and select always get notifications and then you'll never miss a video. I do lots of videos about project pans and um, cruelty free beauty and stuff. Um, lately I've been doing stuff with hair but I don't always. Uh, so for starters, mom style, I'm going to clip my hair up using my kids hair bow because all of my clips seem to have disappeared. Um, so I just filmed a tutorial, or not really a tutorial, uh, so much as like a chit chat get ready with me which is pretty much what this video is going to be of how I straighten my hair, um, which I just got live right now. This should be going live much, much later than that, but I will link it in the iCard. And I also filmed a video of how I curl my hair, how I curl my hair for my audition. Um, but I haven't used, been using this curling wand for like a really, really, really long time because it does take forever to do and I don't have a lot of time on my hands normally so um, typically I'm just like throw it in a messy bun or maybe straighten it ever since I got it colored I've been doing a better job of, of taking care of it a little bit do you guys find that to be the case with you too where you're like as soon as you do anything not necessarily a color maybe a new cut you're like more into your hair all of a sudden because it's different and so you actually start styling it you can always tell when I'm kind of like bored with my hair when all I ever do is put it in messy buns. That being said, I'm a mom and so a lot of times it just kind of is whatever it is. Um, so a long time ago for Christmas my mom got me this Enzo Milano, Enzo Milano curling iron. If I can find a link, I will try to remember to link it down below. I try to do that when I remember. It's one of those things that I frequently forget to do. Um, I have no idea if Enzo Milano is cruelty free or not because um, if you guys don't know this channel is all about cruelty free stuff but I first off this was a gift secondly I've had it forever I don't understand and I would love if someone in the comments would tell me how hair curl curler companies would test their products on animals because I know that like Conair is considered cruelty free so there's got to be some way that they are testing if Conair is cruelty free but other brands aren't necessarily listed on that so I don't really know how that works maybe um, Conair has some other products like I don't know does Conair have like hair dyes and shampoos and stuff um, then maybe it would make sense to me but I don't really understand how something like this is something that you would test on an animal but regardless I'm not gonna go out and buy new hair tools uh, just because I transitioned to cruelty free when I already had this, you know what I mean? Because hair tools are one of those things that you kind of just always keep. So I used to do this quite a lot before I had kids. I would do this kind of uh, curling wand sort of thing. It comes with a glove, which I do recommend. I actually just burnt my thumb while I was doing this. You do need to be careful, slash have really <laughs> strong thumbs or whatever. Um, and I do recommend that you use it just because I don't want to be liable if you burn yourself but I find that when I use it my hair ends up looking really frizzy because it catches on the glove so I like to do it without it and just make sure that the end is a little bit off so that I don't burn my fingers and honestly I still do sometimes that ringlet turned out really pretty um, I have one like this and then I have a much smaller one. Maybe I'll do a video of how I use a smaller one. It's basically the exact same thing. I just use a lot smaller sections. And um, you can kind of see what I'm doing. It's, it's pretty straightforward. I'm sure you guys have seen how to do this. Now here's one thing that might be worth considering. I bought this because it's one of those like YouTube made me buy it kind of things. Um, I bought this because I saw was it? I think it was Purse Buzz, who I don't think does videos any, anymore. She was the very first beauty YouTuber that I watched. I watched hair tutorials a long time before I ever watched makeup tutorials, and she always posted some really, really cool updos and stuff. And 
and that's how I like discovered the beauty community. This was in way back when. It was before I ever had kids. God, 2009, 2010. I think it was 2010 actually. Um, that I started watching YouTube, and back then it was completely different, completely different kind of thing. And I saw her using this, and I was like, because the curls turn out so interesting, I was like, oh my gosh, I have to run out and buy one of these curling wands. And of course, since then, like a million other companies have come out with these. Now, the Enzo Milano one does get quite hot, which is nice, um, apart from, you know, don't burn yourself. But I do like that the Enzo Milano one gets hot. It's just, since then I've discovered you can do these kinds of curls with just like a normal curling iron. In fact, I've done it with my Conair curling iron, which I will also try to find a link for and link it down below. Um, because my Conair curling iron is super cheap and in my opinion is just such a workhorse. It's just kind of like, I've had other curling irons throughout the years. I've even had some really high-end ones like, um, Gosh, I don't even remember the names, but very expensive curling irons throughout the years. But I always come back to the Conair one. I find that it gets hot enough and all of that stuff. Um, and so one day, if you guys don't know, I am a model. That sounds much fancier than it is. Uh, when I was 16 years old, I was approached by a photographer, which sounds super creepy and sketchy, but I was working at Starbucks at the time and there was a photographer there that was meeting with a, I think he was actually meeting with another photographer, I can't remember, um, and he approached me and he was like, hey, would you like to model? And I was like, hey, that sounds like I'm going to end up in a body bag, um, but he actually turned out to be completely legit. I didn't end up being sent to like some person's house or anything like that. It was actually for a bridal show um, that does wedding dresses and stuff like that and he asked if I wanted to model and um, connected me with them now it's not paid or anything like that it's just kind of like a volunteer thing but it was really really fun and I made some of the best friends in my life from there one of my really really good mom friends actually we had kids around the same time um, has been doing it just as long as I have and uh, yeah since then I've just kind of been going to these bridal shows and one of the funnest things for me about going to the bridal shows is that we have professionals do our hair and our makeup and I always feel like every single time I go I learn something that I may not have known before because I'm having a professional style my hair style my makeup and um, they always almost always curl our hair and uh, one of them had one of those curling irons that had a clamp on it and what they did is exactly what I'm doing right here. They just didn't use the clamp part of the curl, of the curling iron. They just wrapped it completely around the entire thing. And the curls end up looking almost exactly the same. Um, it's actually a shame I don't have that curling iron at my house right now because if I did, I would show you how the curls end up looking almost exactly the same. So you don't necessarily need to go out and buy one of these curling wands. What I will say is I don't have to hold it as long on this one because it does get so hot. So that I guess is a positive thing. But this is not something that you want to do when you're in any kind of rush because by the time I get about as far as I am right now, I'm kind of like, okay, I am over it. I also just filmed a get ready with me for this makeup that I am wearing. I'm doing Pan That Palette this year, if you guys don't know, um, and trying to completely finish up my Anastasia Beverly Hills self-made palette, and this year I'm doing so much better than I was doing on my Too Faced Chocolate Bar palette, um, which is what I did last year, and I think I actually will finish the entire palette this year. There's a very good chance that I'll make it. There's one shadow I'm a little nervous about, but I really think I can do it. And... Um, Pretty much all year, we're into June now, I've worn it every single day. Whereas last year what I would do is I would set goals for myself and every time I met a goal, I would reward myself by having a couple of days off from the palette, which I kind of had to do last year because I didn't enjoy doing Pan That Palette quite as much as I've been enjoying it this year. And so whenever I would hit Pan on an eyeshadow, I would give myself two days off 
and wear something else in my collection. Um, and whenever I finished an eyeshadow, I would give myself four days off and play around with my other collection. So that way I didn't feel like my entire makeup collection was being ignored for a whole year while I focused on finishing this one palette, right? Well, I haven't been doing that this year because I've been enjoying the palette so much. I've worn it almost every single day, almost every day. I had to use two hair bows for this one. Um, I've worn it almost every single day. Uh-oh, toddler's coming. Hold on a minute. Sorry about that. My kiddo wanted something. I don't remember what I was saying before my toddler walked in. Um... Oh, yes, yeah. so I've been doing kind of pan that palette, and uh, I haven't given myself any days off because I was enjoying the palette so much, and I realized that I kind of wanted a little bit of a break from it. So um, yesterday was audition day. I had my second audition yesterday, which by the time you're watching this is many, many, many days later. Um, but I had an audition for a musical last night, and so I wore different makeup for that because I felt like I wanted to wear something more natural and the color I'm trying to pan right now is super bright and colorful and green um, and not something that I think is necessarily audition appropriate. So yesterday I took a break and then today I took a break again and since I was doing something other than what I always do, I decided to film a get ready with me. So I, I just filmed one on this makeup look. I assume that video will be out before this video is out. But I actually have a lot of videos filmed right now that are waiting to be edited and if I can pick up the pace on editing, I think that I'll be posting a lot this month coming up on this channel, which is good. This channel, if you guys don't know, I have multiple channels. I have my daily family vlogging channel, which is said in Kim Pact. Um, and that is the best place to follow us because usually whenever we take breaks from YouTube, that's the first place that we come back to. Um, but I also have some other channels as well. And this particular channel, this is the only one that got caught up in the demonetization crisis or whatever that happened earlier this year. Um, where YouTube changed the rules of who could monetize and you had to have a thousand subscribers and over 4,000 hours of watch time, which um, I wasn't too worried about because honestly, honestly you guys, everyone was freaking out about that, but I can tell you this channel brought in like no money. It was like enough to buy like a can of soda a month, you know, it was not a lot that I was losing out on when it got demonetized. Um, but I thought that this channel wouldn't get demonetized because I do have over a thousand subscribers, but because I upload it so inconsistently, there we go, because I upload so inconsistently, I didn't have the 4,000 hours of watch time on this channel that's required. So right now I'm posting a lot of videos and none of them are monetized. And if I was smart, I would probably be posting more frequently on the other channels, which I... I am posting quite a lot right now on the other channels, but I would spend my energy on the largest channel if I was doing this just for money. And I do it some for money, so I'm not going to lie. Um, I would spend all my energy on that because that's what would actually <laughs> bring in money. This channel has always been just my fun, the fun one. But it would be cool if I did make up those 4,000 hours of watch time, and if I do, um, this video or this channel will get monetized again. And so I, I'm kind of this summer, or at least right now at the time of filming, focusing a little bit on um, posting more frequently here so that hopefully I can make up those hours and get these videos monetized again. Because a little something is a little something. It's always good, right? My husband's a teacher, and I'm a stay-at-home mom, and the vast majority of our income is from him. People think that, oh, you're a YouTuber, so you make a lot of money, um, and that's just absolutely not true. You have to, 
you have to be getting brand deals really to make a lot of money which is really challenging on this channel because not only will I not work with a brand if it's not cruelty free I really would prefer not to work with anyone unless they're on logical harmony um, so I don't foresee brands approaching me over here at all for brand deals there's other ways to make money on YouTube too which we've done a little bit so for example we had some merch we have a merch store that goes with our family vlogging channel and then we have a patreon page which is patreon.com slash Kim TV where people can support our content and that's one of those things too I've actually made it a point to try and support a couple um, this is not me telling you that you guys have to do this by the way you absolutely don't I totally appreciate every single person who does support us on patreon or who bought t-shirts or whatever or you know uses our Amazon affiliate links which if I can find it that's what I'll link this with I really appreciate that but you know you don't have to do that but my point is is that um, when someone donates like a dollar on patreon you're giving uh, you're giving that youtuber so much you're basically giving them the equivalent of a thousand views so when you look at a youtuber and you think oh my gosh they have you know 15,000 subscribers or 30,000 subscribers or a hundred thousand subscribers keep in mind that most people make about like a dollar per thousand views the way the ad revenue works is you're paid a CPM which is a certain amount per thousand views and that varies a lot depending on what kind of content you post so let's suppose this channel was monetized which at the moment that I'm recording this it's not maybe by the time it gets up it will be if I have enough videos up I don't know um, you may have seen a makeup ad play before this video and so because there might have been a makeup ad playing before this video and it's very relevant you might be more likely to click on it and so I might have a higher CPM on this channel in theory if it was actually monetized than I would on say the family vlogging channel where people are not going and looking up you know audition day or looking up you know dad on a motorcycle it, the people who watch the daily vlogging channel are much more often people who are already subscribed um, so anyways what I was saying was you might um, you might have higher CPM depending on what the ad was that played for it and to be honest since YouTube changed the rules of who gets to have ads play our CPM on the other channels has actually gone up a little because obviously if less channels are monetized that monetization money gets divided amongst the people who are monetized so at least that's my theory I don't know YouTube has never told me anything about that but let's say you make a dollar per thousand views just for easy math if you are supporting someone on Patreon, you are giving them basically the equivalent of a thousand views for one dollar. And so when I realized that, I realized I need, I want to do a better job of supporting other creators too. And we can't afford a lot, but there are a few channels that I do support on Patreon. So I think that's super duper cool that people are kind of figuring out ways around the ad revenue thing because the ad revenue has never been the most efficient way to make money on YouTube to be honest and I've done a couple brand deals on the other channels here and there like I did one with a baby carrier hi Roslyn hey mom yes you found your butterfly clip do you know it's not time it's not time it's not time to see the butterfly clip he's so We still have eight minutes left before we can see the butterflies. Constantly interrupted by kiddos. It's one of those things. This is seriously, absolutely why I don't do this one because it just, it is just so much, t takes so much longer to do. It's funny because I've heard a lot of people say that these um, wands are quicker for them, but I don't find that's the case at all. I find that it takes me quite a while to do my full head of hair with the wands. I like the way it looks better, that's for sure, but I find it does take longer. 
and I'm actually going with thicker sections than I would normally go, so it's going to look more wavy and less curly. Normally I like to do really small sections on the wand because I think the wand actually makes it look like your hair is curly curly. But I'm going with big sections this time around because I just need it to not take forever, you know? Real talk, it's one of those things. Another thing that I do like about the wand though, as opposed to like a, a curling iron that has a clamp, so I kind of am like using my hair to shimmy it on down to the bottom of the wand. Um, another reason why I do like this, as opposed to a curling iron with a clamp, is that I find that my hair stays curled better. So like I get kind of second day curls the next morning if I sleep on it. And since I showered today, I don't have to wash my hair tonight. Um, I can sleep on this and then tomorrow just kind of touch it up a little bit. And that will be super duper quick. And I kind of discovered that recently with straightening too. I said that in my straightening video that um, if I straighten my hair, I find it's easier to touch up the second day. Okay, so I, the camera cut out, but I did this one last section, and that's it. Um, I do find that it makes frizzies, and my hair has had a little bit of frizz. When, last time I mentioned that in a video, you couldn't really see it um, in the video, and I can't tell if you can see it in the viewfinder, but I can see it. So I've been using this Hask Argon Oil, and I think I said in my straightening video that I don't know if that brand is cruelty-free or not, and I double-checked. And I sent them an email, and they are. They are cruelty-free, 100% cruelty-free. They go as far as to make sure that nobody is third-party testing either. They don't sell anywhere that requires them to test. Um, they aren't on the Logical Harmony list yet, but they are on her pending list. So I expect them to be there. And so I kind of do that just to smooth out those flyaway hairs. But there it is, the finished product. Thank you for listening to me chit chat. I hope that you guys liked this video. If you did, consider giving it a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, which is the big circle with my face on it. You can also check out uh, the videos on either side of me right now um, if you haven't seen them yet. In fact, that will help us out a little, a little bit with the whole demonetization thing, because if we get more watch hours on this channel, this channel will get monetized again. No pressure, but if you want to watch them, I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Bye, guys.